Now let's discuss polar pattern, and if you don't know what that means, polar pattern just describes where the microphone picks up audio all the way around it. We will be simplifying this and focusing on three main patterns, cardioid, omnidirectional, and figure eight or bidirectional. Before we discuss the polar patterns more in depth, I want to give you a demo of each of these patterns so you can understand a bit better what we're talking about. Starting on the cardioid pattern, moving around 90 degrees to show you the side of this, continuing around the rear so you can hear the most rejection on this pattern at the back, continuing around the second 90 degree angle, there it is, and then rotating and ending at the front of the pattern. Now on to omnidirectional, moving around to 90 degrees. There shouldn't be too much change in level or tone. Continuing around the rear of the mic, it should sound the same. Continuing to the second 90 degree angle, there it is. And then going to the front of the omni pattern. Lastly, we have figure eight, and I will rotate around to 90 degrees. And this should have an amazing amount of rejection here. Continuing around to the rear lobe of sensitivity, this is the back of the mic, hot signal there. Continuing around to the second knoll or dead area at 90 degrees, a lot of rejection. And then rotating and ending back on the front pattern. First up, we have the cardioid polar pattern, and for the majority of us YouTubers and podcasters, this is what we should be using, or at least some derivative of this, whether it is cardioid, hypercardioid, or supercardioid. What the cardioid pattern does is it picks up the most amount of sound from the front and then rejects the most from the rear, so you can really use this polar pattern to your advantage point the front at the sound source you want to pick up. If you have some fan noise going on around you, point the rear of the microphone at that, and it is really gonna help reject that noise. Secondly, we have the omnidirectional pattern, and that means the mic picks up sounds 360 degrees around it equally, this does not reject anything, so if you have background noise going on, it is going to get picked up. If you are in an untreated space, it is going to be apparent. I think for the majority of us amateur content creators, we should avoid the omnidirectional polar pattern, except maybe for lav mics, because the majority of us are recording in spare bedrooms. Our spare bedrooms sound bad. They were not acoustically designed to be recorded in. They are not properly soundproofed. There is a lot of background noise going on, and all of those reflections and all of that background noise is going to distract from the information you're trying to present. And lastly, we have the figure eight or bi-directional pattern. That means the mic picks up sound in the front and picks up sound in the rear, but rejects a ton of sound from the sides. This can be used to your benefit if you really need a lot of rejection from the sides, but if you're sat at a desk, that rear lobe of sensitivity can cause a whole load of issues where your voice bounces off your computer monitor and then comes into the rear of the mic and sounds terrible. So again, I think a lot of us amateurs should avoid this, especially if we are solo recording. One instance where this polar pattern may be really helpful is if you have a guest coming on your show and you just have the one mic because you can talk into the front, they can talk into the rear, all of that is down mixed to a single track and you are off to the races, but that can raise its own issues because you need to mix in the analog realm and to make sure each of you is coming through at the same level. Otherwise, you are in for a world of hurt. This is why I am saying this polar pattern can be a bit difficult to use, especially if you are just getting into audio. And to summarize the polar pattern discussion, I think the question that you should be asking yourself is where am I going to be using the microphone? Because that's going to tell you the environment that the microphone is living in and what kind of objects are around it. Are you sat at a desk with no treatment on it with a big computer monitor in front of you? If that's the case, a cardioid, hypercardioid, or supercardioid pattern is likely to be your best friend because you can easily get the rejection that you want from it. Are you in a studio with two people sat across from each other? If you can have individual cardioid microphones, I think that's the best option. But if you can only use one microphone, a figure eight pattern could be a pretty good option option there because you have the front lobe of sensitivity and the rear lobe of sensitivity so you can talk into either side. 
And then we have the omnidirectional polar pattern. Bless its heart, it does have its uses in music. It has its uses in electronic news gathering. A lot of lavalier microphones are omnidirectional as well. But for the majority of us YouTubers, podcasters, and streamers who are amateur, we are recording in spare bedrooms. They sound bad. I think we should avoid this. And if you have a blue Yeti and you are a solo talker, do not use the omnidirectional pattern. Use the cardioid. <laughs> That's the conclusion. In the next video, we're going to be covering different type of microphone tones, which one is right for you, how to read a frequency response graph. So if you want to check that out, the video is linked directly beneath me as well as in the description.